Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the brand new AXS R7 recorder from Sony. Uh, this is a major upgrade from the uh, original AXS R5 raw recorder for the F5 and F55, uh, but it, it works in very much the same way, as in that it attaches to the camera on the back here, it becomes an integral part of the system. Uh, the camera controls it and allows you to record raw and some other new formats uh, on the, onto ex other cards here. Uh, basically, the R7 uh, extends the functionality of the F5 and F55 even further. Uh, the big differences between the R5 and the R7 are first and foremost the, the build quality here on the R7 is uh, substantially improved in my opinion, uh, much stronger, much beefier. It's a little bit taller, but they've, they've also created a little plate up here as you can kind of see. Uh, this plate uh, secures it more uh, to the camera body, attaching it here and here. Uh, and just making the whole thing much more uh, durable in design. So I really like that design feature. Uh, beyond that, uh, it allows you to go up to 120 frames per second in full 4K RAW on the F55. So uh, on the um, uh, previous DR5, you go up to 60 frames. That's still true with this on the F5. But with the F55, we can push this up to 120 in full quality, right? So full sensor, full readout, 120. Uh, onto uh, the cards here. Uh, so that's a great new feature. Uh, and just to show you that it's working here, uh, I can, uh, I have actually put it on a little button uh, here. I click that button, you can see 120 FPS, and that's rolling right onto the uh, cards here. So uh, I really, again, just a, a great update uh, if you need that thing. And uh, 120 is definitely required for a lot of applications today. Uh, additionally, which is a great add on, is the ability now to buffer that raw material or cache that raw material uh, on the uh, R7. So for wildlife and any other application where you just need to capture a moment, I can buffer that in full 4K quality. So the buffer um, internally is up to 30 seconds and 24p, right? So that's the max buffer. Uh, if you go up at higher frame rates, you're going to have a reduced buffer length. If you go all the way to 120, then it's just down to a second or two. Uh, but you can buffer in all those frame rates uh, to get, again, just to capture that moment as needed. And again, I put it on a button here just to show you how it works, but basically turn that on there uh, and my cache is roll going. And you can see the time code is rolling forward as well. So uh, that's full 30 seconds of cache just like that. Easy enough. Uh, I like having that great new feature. Uh, so cache recording, higher frame rate, uh, and uh, the use of the newer slimline cards. The um, original R5 uh, had a bigger card slot. It was the, had used a larger AXS media. Um, they then came out with the slimmer line cards, which looked similar to this. Uh, they were the um, S24 cards, which are blue on the outside, blue trimmed. Uh, those will work, the new slimline ones will work here. It only works with the slim cards now, unfortunately, but uh, these are much more future-proof, and there's two card slots now, which is a great thing. You can flip between them, but they don't jump over. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the cards that I have here, though, are the S48. These S48 cards are basically twice as fast, and they allow you to do full 120 uh, in 4K right onto them, and you just need that speed to get that frame rate. So uh, this, is, uh, this is, I have one in here and one here. Uh, these are the fastest sort of highest level card out there, but you can still use the trim line blue ones, just not all the way up in terms of uh, uh, frame rate in the full 4K RAW. Uh, so uh, again, a little change there, but not a, a big deal. Um, additionally, though, there's some new compressions going on here, which sort of gets around that. So the R7 actually introduces uh, two new uh, formats beyond the uh, Sony RAW format that we all know. So Sony RAW is in there in full 120 if you want it, but the, um, the R7 adds two new flavors called XOCN, standard and light. XOCN stands for extended, tonal range, original camera negative. It's a long, that's a lot of, wor a lot of words there to describe a really actually future thinking, really interesting new uh, format that Sony has created. Sony's been making compression formats for a long time. We've known them for, they made them standard ones across the industry. The XOCN format actually goes uh, way beyond what we've seen from them before in a sense that they've created a 16-bit uh, uh, compression format, uh, which is 
very similar to raw in its workflow, right? So XOCN 16-bit, great for uh, HDR workflows and where any, it's in a situation where you need that range. So very gradable, very adjustable. Uh, has the same raw basic workflow that we've seen before, uh, as in it doesn't bake in white balance or ISO. It's a very clean image, uh, but it is considerably smaller than the raw formats. The standard format is uh, about 30% reduced compared to uh, full Sony RAW, right? So if I go into it here on the side of the camera, uh, you'll see that reduction. Right now I'm in full 4K RAW, RAW SQ, at and I have about 128 minutes on a one terabyte mag that I have in here, so two hours. Uh, if I go into the menus here, and by the way, if you haven't uh, used the F55 lately, the new firmware makes everything much easier to get to. Some of that buggy menu stuff, it's very easy to get to things. Hit that option button. There's my project. Uh, I have my, I'm selected here already, my AXS format. Um, I, have, I have the S by S internal turned off right now, by the way, uh, because I was showing that frame rate option earlier. Uh, but you can turn on S by S at the same time also and have simultaneous recordings if you want that. So that's still an option, of course. Uh, here, though, I'm going to choose the new XOCN standard format. And I'll go ahead and give it a second to just get that loaded in. OK. And switch, switch it over. OK. And back here now, uh, you'll see when I go back to the, out of the menus here, I have 183 minutes of runtime. So I've, I've gained 45 minutes of a recording. Again, 30% savings over uh, traditional raw Sony format. Uh, and the quality loss is, is almost nothing. It's amazingly similar to quick testing of everything here with some charts and some detail, detail objects, and it's definitely undistinguishable, the uh, adjustment, the, 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 the raw to the XOCN standard. Uh, pretty amazing what they've done with that. Uh, going beyond it, uh, though, we do have the light, XOCN light format, which is a 60% saving. So uh, that adds up in reality. Go to XOCN light. Uh, go ahead and switch that on. Uh, and now I have 309 minutes. Uh, these are all in 24p, but 309 minutes, that's over five hours of runtime. So XOCN light gives you tons of, uh, of, of storage capacity, uh, basic really long run times, but still a 16-bit uh, and has that basic raw workflow. So again, very future thinking compression that's going on here uh, in, in the R7. Uh, and uh, that data rate, by the way, is very similar to the uh, XAVC uh, 4K internal compression that you get on the camera. So uh, you can actually compare them apples to apples, but the the, uh, the XOCN flavor is 16-bit and just overall better quality. So I'm really happy that they've done uh, this with the new system. And it's kind of a, a sort of sleeper addition, uh, but uh, it's something that makes the, this camera platform go even further. Uh, in terms of supporting the new codec, it's always a little scary to have a new codec out there. Uh, Sony has, is updating their raw viewer software to enable you to uh, have the same basic workflow we had with the, uh, with the Sony raw material. Uh, of course, they're uh, having, uh, releasing out their API, so the uh, Resolve is going to support it, Colorfront. Uh, many others will support it, just as they did the Sony RAW format. So that's going to be out there working uh, as soon as possible. Already, I know there's some out there working with this flavor. So uh, this is a new codec, but one that really actually pushes beyond what we've seen before uh, in terms of compression from Sony. So uh, I really am excited about the, the new flavor. And the R7 overall, it's just a nice beefy addition to the line, and it does really make the camera go that much further. And, uh, and, and I know there's many out there that need that, those options, the, the 120, the buffer, uh, and of course, just longer run time. So we need that. I mean, we all want the quality of, uh, of, a, of a raw type flavor, uh, but, uh, we, uh, but we can't all necessarily afford all that hard drive space. It, it really does hurt, especially when you're doing something uh, with longer run times, you know, different especially a dock, for instance. So uh, I really like the R7 update. Uh, again, very surprising to me what they've added in there. Uh, it is a nice extension of the camera. And so for all of you owners, both F5 and F55, uh, you can add this on and just, again, keep extending the life of your camera. So uh, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.